I like what you brought up about the temple. And I've heard people use the destruction of the temple to show that these gospels were written prior to that before. Can you help us understand how traumatic it would have been for a first century Jew for the temple to be destroyed? And therefore, you wouldn't just write about it lightly if it had been destroyed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, the, the temple was the the center of Jewish identity and worship. It's been likened to a combination of Wall Street, the White House, and the National Cathedral. Wow, okay. okay. So it, it had, it was, it was a bank. Um, it was, uh, it was a university as it were, it was where a lot of education went on. That's why we see Jesus debating with this, with the scholars in the temple. Mm -hmm. It, it, uh, it had libraries. It was a center of learning. It was, it was the whole focus of Jewish religion, culture, and identity. Moreover, it was believed to have been built on the place where Abraham had attempted to sacrifice his son, Isaac back in Genesis 22 and the sacrifices that went on in the temple were regarded as memorializing that great self sacrifice of their ancestor, Isaac. Um, and the, the temple also was, was built and decorated to represent the whole universe. Um, it was really a microcosm. So for example, the veil between the holy place and the holy of holies was, uh, was blue. This massive veil was blue and it was embroidered with the sun and the moon and the stars mm -hmm. to represent the universe. And likewise, the high priest wore a blue garment to match the veil, which also had the sun, moon, and the stars embroidered on it because he was the cosmic man. Mm -hmm. He was the man whose body was the temple as it were, or he was the, like the concentration of the temple. And, and really when you, when you think about Jewish worldview, the whole world is a temple. But then the whole world is, as it were, concentrated in the Jerusalem temple. And then the whole Jerusalem temple is concentrated into the person of the high priest. And so you have these kind of like a bullseye, mm -hmm. you know, like a, a target of like, you know, successive concentration of the, the spiritual essence of all of creation, you know? So when you, when you destroy the temple, you are symbolically destroying the whole universe. And that's why in the Gospels, when we have our Lord's uh, end times discourses in like Matthew 23 through 25, you'll find a mixture of language of the destruction of the temple being being prophesied, which actually was fulfilled in the year 70. But that's also will be mixed with language describing the destruction of the world at, at the end of time. And why? can Jesus and the gospel authors like mix the description, the mix the prophecies of the destruction of the temple with prophecies of the end of the world. It's because the temple literally represented the whole world. Mm. And so the destruction in the year 70 of the Jerusalem temple was a type sign and prophecy of what's going to happen to the whole creation uh, prior to the Lord's return. I've heard people point to that passage from Christ who says this generation will not pass away before the Son of Man comes again. Right. How is that? How does, so I know we're going to, that's kind of what you're referencing. How, how does that not disprove? I right. Mean, I mean, the generation has passed away and the Son of Man has not come. Right. Yeah. Well, first of all, the, the word generation can also mean race, you know, so this yeah. race will not pass away and the human race hasn't apparently. Um, that, so the, the Greek the, word yeah, it, is, it, is synonymous. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it's polyvalent. Okay. Okay. Has, has more than one sense. So there's, there's that. Uh, furthermore, this is this is super interesting. I, I didn't even believe this before I actually worked on this and found this. But if you go back to the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophets frequently talk about the coming of the Lord. And uh, by that expression, they mean the coming of the Lord in judgment. Okay. And uh, so you find prophecies in the Old Testament where the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem is predicted as a coming of the Lord. And they don't mean a visible apparition of the God of Israel as if he's going to appear and be seen with the physical eye, but they mean a visitation of his divine judgment. So we, we can, you can demonstrate that in, in many passages from the prophets. And I, so I think what we have with Jesus' language, like, this generation uh, will not, you know, pass away until the the coming of the Lord, etc. Is this uh, this language of a visitation in judgment, which indeed happens within a generation, mm. uh, with the judgment that falls upon Jerusalem, to, which in turn, you know, foreshadows uh, the end of the world. 
Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.